Okay, it's time to talk about motherboards. Now, I get the impression that motherboards scare a lot of people in this field. You know, people don't want to deal with them or replace them or try to fix them. Or, or it's a little daunting to uh, try to diagnose a motherboard. It might seem. But what I'm going to tell you is it's pretty easy. There's four main symptoms that could go wrong with a motherboard. And they are, one, the laptop won't power on. Two, components in the laptop are not working, malfunctioning. Three, the computer shuts down randomly. Four, the computer acts abnormally. Now we're gonna go through these symptoms one by one. There could be more symptoms, but these are the ones that I found in my experiences. Now, number one, computer won't power on. You got a laptop that doesn't power on. How can you tell if the motherboard is bad? Well, you just ask yourself, why else wouldn't a computer power on? Number one, if it's on battery power, the battery's dead or the battery's bad. And number two, the AC adapter could be bad. So let's rule out number one, pull the battery out, keep the battery out of the computer for this test. And then take your AC adapter and check the voltage with a voltmeter. And I'm gonna show you how to do that right here. You just use a regular voltmeter. And what you want to test for is voltage. I'm going to put the meter at 20 volts. And you take the tip, the power, the power jack tip. You hold your black, your negative on the outside of the tip. And you put the red the, um, on the in, in the hole on the inside of the tip. Be very careful not to touch the red and the black and the tips together. Otherwise, it will create a short circuit. Now, you can't see it probably on that video. Oh, there you can. 19 volts. Just about 19 volts. So we know the power adapter works. Now, just to make sure, you could take the power adapter and kind of bend it around a little bit and make sure that it's making a good connection. Let's see. I'm going to do that right now. Okay, I'm still getting... Still getting 19 volts. And I'm moving the power adapter around a little bit. Jiggling it around making sure that there's no crimps in the wire. Okay, even though I jiggle it around, it's still moving around at 19 volts. So we know the tip is good. A lot of times, you know, the tip will break like right in this area here and you won't get that 19 volts after you do that, after it's broken. So instead of just taking the whole computer apart and finding out it has a perfectly good power jack, test the power adapter first. Now another reason a motherboard might not turn on is because it's not getting power through the power jack. The power jack might be damaged. So observe what you can from the outside and see if you can see if the power jack's loose or detached from the motherboard. And if it is, then you know you have to replace the power jack probably. But if it looks like it's secure, the only way we're going to be able to test the power jack is to get down to motherboard level and look at where the power jack is soldered onto the motherboard. And this I cover in many of the case study videos. Now there's a few other things that might cause a motherboard not to turn on or a computer not to turn on. It could have a bad processor, but bad processors are fairly rare. I would say one out of every 75 computers I work on, it's the processor rather than the motherboard that's bad. And also there's like maybe the power button on the actual laptop is broken or something mechanical like that. But again, that's unlikely, but you could check those things too. Okay, number two, components in the laptop won't work. For example, a CD drive or a wireless card don't, don't show up in Windows or they're not working properly. Well, that could possibly be a motherboard, but the way to test that is to replace that component. If your CD drive's not working, replace the CD drive. If it's still not working, maybe the CD drive controller on the motherboard is bad. I've had that happen on a couple Toshiba laptops I worked on. I bought a brand new CD drive, put them in, it's still not working, still wasn't recognized by the BIOS, and it was a bad motherboard. Now HP also had a problem with their wireless cards, but it wasn't the wireless cards that were bad, it was the actual controller on the motherboard that controls the card that was bad. I think it was positioned next to a chip that got real hot, like the graphics chip or something like that on the motherboard. So if you have a laptop with components not working and you replace the components and they're still not working, then you might have a bad motherboard. Now how do you rule out if Windows isn't causing this problem or the operating system's not causing a problem? Well, test it with a different operating system. 
this is always a good test of a motherboard using like a Linux, Linux distribution like Nopix or using the Ultimate Boot CD for Windows. These are both bootable CDs, and it's essentially testing the hardware of the laptop because you're running it on a different operating system. Last thing to try if components aren't working and you suspect as your motherboard, flash the BIOS of the motherboard. Maybe the BIOS got corrupted somehow, and since the BIOS is like handles the basic functions of a computer, maybe it's not doing its job and causing some abnormal activity in the computer. Okay, number three, computer shuts down randomly. Now this is a common symptom of a computer overheating. So let's make sure it's not an overheating problem. And how do we do that? Well, what I do is I take a can of compressed air and I blow it into the laptop in the bottom where the fan is and also in the heat sink on the side of the computer. If you do this, you might see clouds of dust come out. And that's a good thing, but you wanna make sure you get all the chunks out of the laptop before you turn it back on because those chunks of dust that might still be stuck in there might cause the fan blades to actually stick. I go over this in the case study videos and several of them. Watch how I do that there and you can see in action, you know, cleaning out a laptop and getting all the dust out of it. Now once you get the dust out of a laptop and you're sure that the fan is spinning and the airways are clean, if the computer keeps shutting down after this, you can be pretty certain that it's not the CPU overheating that's causing the problem, but a problem with the motherboard. I've had systems where I opened them up, I made sure all the airways were clean, I made sure that the heatsink was making a good connection with the processor, put it all back together, and the computer still powered down. It turned out it was a bad motherboard. Okay, number four, the computer acts abnormally. It blue screens, things aren't working the way they're supposed to, it doesn't boot up every time, it doesn't boot up at all sometimes. Now first I want to make sure it's not Windows that's causing a problem, so again, we're not going to deal too much with the software side, so do all your Windows fixes and make sure that Windows isn't causing a problem. Or, like I said before, just run Nopix, which is a great Linux distribution, the Ultimate Boot CD for Windows, which is also great, and then you'll know Windows isn't the thing that's causing the problem. Then, if you're still having problems with the computer acting abnormally, start taking out components one by one. Take the hard drive out. You could do that if you're running it from a uh, live Linux distribution. Um, take the RAM out. Replace the RAM, maybe with a stick around that you know is good that you have around in the shop. Take the wireless card out. Take the CD drive out. And start taking components out one by one and get the motherboard down to basics like CPU, one stick of RAM, motherboard, and power. And hook up the screen and just make sure that it goes on. But break it down to basics so you're sure that it's not a component that's causing the problem. So once you have it all broken down to basics and you're sure Windows isn't causing a problem, then it's probably a bad motherboard. Okay, so it's a bad motherboard. Now you need to buy a motherboard. Where do I buy my motherboards? You guessed it, on eBay. Uh, I love buying on eBay because you got a great selection. You can buy from multiple sellers and you usually get the best price. Now the way to search on eBay for a motherboard is first try to get the model number off of the motherboard itself if you can. If you have access to the motherboard you already, or you already took the computer apart, get the model off the motherboard and do a search for that motherboard. If you're not at that point and you still need to order the motherboard, you could type in the model number of the computer you got the motherboard out of and do a search that way. Like let's say if it's um, a Compaq M2000, just type you know in eBay Compaq M2000 motherboard and do a search like that. The problem with doing a search like that though is, for example, HP's have like a DV6000 model, but there's actually like a hundred different submodels in the DV6000 series, and some of them have different motherboards than each other. Like say there's a DV6310 US or DV6425. So that's when you have a computer like that it's a little dangerous to search for a motherboard just by model number of the computer alone I've gotten burned on that many times myself and so it's best just to pull the motherboard out and look on the motherboard and get the model off the motherboard and do a search to buy one using the model number of the motherboard now that leads to the next question how do you get the motherboard out well that's what all the case study videos show you a lot of them involve bringing the laptop down the motherboard level when we're doing a repair. But before you watch the case study videos, make sure you watch the video on how to take a laptop apart, get the basics, then watch the case study videos, and then you can attempt it yourself.